I would uh, like to open the public meeting of the Falmouth Public Schools School Committee agenda for March 10th, 2020. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I remind everyone that this meeting is being telecast and recorded on Channel 14. I also remind any member of the public who wishes to make an audio or video recording of the open session of this meeting to first notify me as the chair, and I will then inform the public of the recording as required by the open meeting law. I hope you're doing so for the enterprise. Thank you, sir. I had to look around there, but thank you. Uh, Fishbowl, please. Okay. Um, Adele at Mullen Hall. I love my teachers because my library media teacher is kind and listens to us. Adele. This is Ella from Lawrence School. My teacher encourages us to listen and learn and to never give up. And last but not least, the high school. Here. Riley from the high school. <laughs> Clipper time has helped me by giving me more time to get help from my teachers. Thank you. Awesome. The mission of the Falmouth Public Schools is to educate students so that they are, they are engaged in their education in a way which develops their capacity to pursue their goals and foster lifelong learning. The three core beliefs which define us as a school system and enable us to accomplish our mission are Continuous improvement for students, teachers, staff, and administrators. Enthusiasm for teaching and learning. Collaboration in teaching and learning. The role of the school committee is threefold. To write policy, to approve the operating budget, to hire the superintendent and support her in carrying out her initiatives for the district. Public comment. Please limit comments to two minutes per individual to items not on the meeting agenda. There will be no debate or no action taken on public comment items. The committee will take items under advisement or the individual may request an item to be placed on the future agenda. Any public comments, please. We will move on. Presentation of highlight of education, Falmouth High School. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mary Gans, as I say, the very proud principal of Falmouth High School. Um, I have some handouts tonight. Um, we're talking about the bridge program. And I do have a presentation here, um, but I'm not going to go through each slide. I know that we are slated for 10 minutes. I'd rather have you hear from the people who are really the heart of the program. Um, and they are kind enough to be here. We have several parents and um, several bridge alumni students and two staff members, Ms. Fouth and Ms. Noonan who Ms. Falth is the clinical coordinator and Ms. Noonan is the TA academic coordinator. Um, quickly, I will just say, you all, you all have known about the bridge program and the need came about because we had a lot of students who were being hospitalized, typically for a mental health reason, and when they got discharged from the hospital, we really didn't have something for them at the high school to support them as they transitioned back to school. And so what was happening was students were being home hospital tutored and the longer they were out of school, the harder it was for them to get back into school. And um, Ms. Falth actually, probably about six years ago when I first met her when we were both working at the Lawrence School, was telling me, you have to look into this Bright program, you have to look into this Bright program. And I poo-pooed it for a couple of years <laughs> and I finally went to a workshop and I was like, oh my goodness, Ms. Falth actually knows what she's talking about. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Um, and so we really started talking about it and figuring out how we would make it work. And um, the previous superintendent, Superintendent Taylor, basically said, well, reallocate what you have and make it work. And so we did. And we have a program which is currently over capacity based on 
what the Bright model recommends, but I have to give huge credit to Ms. Noon and Ms. Falth, and also we have another TA who supports the program, Ms. Negri, who's not here tonight, because they just make it run like a well-oiled machine and um, never complain, even though they are busy from the minute the school bell rings in the morning until after the school bell rings at the end of the day. So I don't know how you want to, I'd like to have all these people introduce themselves. Should I have them come up here? Or, oh. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, should, we, should we go off and kind of sure. tell a little Absolutely. bit about okay, it? Okay, yes, go up. So in your handouts, too, I've given you, there's a brochure, there's an overview. Um, here I can show you Ms. list what There's um, the intake form that they use. <clears throat> um, typically what happens is, if you go right to slide eight. Oh, Sharon. Oh, it's on this phasing thing. What happens is we typically find out that a student has been hospitalized. So before the student is even discharged, the bridge program starts. And if you two want to come up and talk about that, that'd be great. Should we stand right here? Sure. <laughs> or in the center? Where do people typically stand? Right? <laughs> it's our first time. Um, so as um, you just heard, it is a program that's we're in our third year right now. Um, it started out of Brookline High School about 15 years ago. They partnered with Brookline Mental Health Center um, to face this mental health challenge that started, you know, really taking hold about 15 years ago. So now it's in close to 200 high schools um, and some junior highs. There's even a few elementary schools that are um, using this program. Throughout the state of Massachusetts, there's a few in Connecticut. And the Bright team out of Brookline just started. There's a few schools in Oregon that they were just traveling. And so it's really spreading throughout the country. So. I can speak for both of us because we talk about it all the time. We feel so lucky to be on this train of wellness and how to support students and families at what they say is the most challenging point in their lives. Um, so it kind of says it right here, the overview. It's a short-term general ed program, eight to 12 weeks. And a student would come to us two different ways. One would be if they are missing a large amount of, of days due to their mental health um, struggles. The other would be they're in a hospital for a suicide attempt or suicidal thoughts and they need, you know, their anxiety depression is so severe that they need to be in a hospital, a day program or an overnight. And when they get discharged, that two week period is the most critical time for to prevent a relapse. Um, all research shows that that two weeks is when most students would return back to the hospital. We have data supporting that as well here at Falmouth High School that before this, people would come back you know, they meet with their guidance counselors who are all well intended but doing a million other things and say, okay, here's some work that you need to make up, get back to class, and they would, it, it would be the worst time to have that kind of stress. So what we do between the two of us, therapeutic, I'm a school adjustment counselor, I'm a student academic coordinator, the two of us reach out when they're in the hospital. So I would talk to the clinicians at the hospital, call the family, and actually when I was thinking about what to say to you tonight, that's my favorite moment is when I can call a family and say, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. Um, this program exists at Falmouth High School, and there's other families that are going through this, and what we do is support you through this. Um, and Ms. Noonan talks to the tutors at the hospital. So a lot of programs um, have tutoring. She has to talk to all of the teachers, get all the assignments, fax them, email them to the tutor at the hospital. So that's kind of how it all starts. And then the families know that we are their direct contact from that point forward. They enter Falmouth High School, we have an intake meeting with their guidance counselor, school nurses, if there's medication pieces, the two of us, um, and we kind of map out their plan for the eight to 12 weeks. And by that point, Ms. Noonan has talked to every teacher and knows exactly you know, what's going on in each course and when is a new chapter starting. So Susie can start next week, not this week, you know, in the middle of something. So in their packet is the work tracker. Oh, awesome, thank you, Ms. For Hans. a sample work tracker. So, you left in your packet, right here, and it tells you how what, what goes out through the Google Doc from Ms. Noonan so that teachers can fill this out, say when they would like a student back in, in their class. And another amazing thing is that the teacher will come to the bridge program and sit and have these, you know, more heart-to-heart -heart conversations with their student, which takes the teacher out of that academic setting and really kind of meets the kid where they're at in our space, which is a different kind of looking space than a classroom in a lot of ways. 
Ms. Newton, I'm rambling. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> I actually don't have anything to add because I think that I would love for you to hear from parents yes, and students rather than any more from us. Um, we just love what we get to do. We've both been with the program since it started, so thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So, students, do you want to? So, we have Maggie, Michaela, and Sam, who would you guys want to come up and. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Um, these are all three students who've been um, through the Bridge Program. They're, They're all graduates. All graduates. We call them alumni. We call them alumni, and the alumni have rules about, um, you know, their parameters of their access to the Bridge Program. But they've been wonderful, wonderful, and they act as role models um, and even often tutors to other students who are in the program. So, do you want to bring parents up at the same time and talk to them or students? I, I'm totally open to how, I know we're limited for time, that's why I don't want to, well, do you guys want we to talk students. about what we're the bridge program did for you? <laughs> <laughs> and when they graduate, yeah. they cross the preschool bridge, and it's really yes. cute, <laughs> and there's a little ceremony, and all the bridge alumni and active members come and celebrate, and they make a special little handprint, it sounds childish, but I, I think that they all say it feels like a nice celebration of an, a, a huge snacks. accomplishment. There's some of the hands. <laughs> there it is. You get yeah. snacks. Hands somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> um, well, I'll start off. Um, I'm Magnolia. I'm a senior here at uh, Falmouth High School, and um, I was first hospitalized freshman year um, before the bridge program was really a thing. I think it was just starting out, but wasn't official. Um, I was hospitalized around December of that year and came back to school January, some midpoint in January, um, and there was nothing in place really. I tried to go back to classes full time. Um, that didn't work so well. <laughs> it was not um, very efficient for me, my mental state, or um, just the anxiety and stress of all the um, the work as well as the other students asking us where we've been, like, oh, where were you, and having to explain to them or not explain to them, you know, I was out, and, you know, I'm not, like, normal, or, you know, whatever you were, you chose to say. Um, I ended up being tutored after attempting to be in school, um, and so the, for the rest of that year, I was just kind of at home. I would meet at libraries or Starbucks with uh, tutors, and that made me pass, which was good enough for me, um, but it wasn't, I never got back to school that year. The entire rest of the year, January to June, I wasn't there. Um, the next year I came in knowing of the bridge program. Uh, my parents had reached out, I think we were told by someone, and it changed everything. I was able to come back sophomore year full force. Um, you know, it, it's a rocky road, but it was so much better and I was actually in school, which was the important part. And um, it just, it was night and day. It's, like, I don't know what I would do without it. Um, I ended up being re-hospitalized, though, um, February of that year. And then I was welcomed back into the bridge program. And ever since then, I've been healthy and happy. So. Um, OK, so I'm Michaela. I'm a senior. And um, similar to Maggie, my hospitalizations <clears throat> and problems took place freshman year. So I actually wasn't put until bridge until coming back from my third hospitalization. So I had already, similar to my, come back to school twice and they just kind of, like the school didn't really know what to do with us as they were explaining. They were doing the best that they could, but we didn't have anything equipped to deal with this issue. And obviously there are multiple students that were going through it, so it wasn't even just me. Um, and they would just kind of be like, all right, do your work. And, you know, sometimes I would stay out of class to do work. Sometimes I would try to go to class. But I feel like even when I was given alone time to do work, I wasn't getting that emotional support. So trying to do schoolwork felt so unimportant and so impossible. Because how am I supposed to focus on math when I've been through so much? And I may have gotten a little bit of temporary help, but I've just been thrown back into this world that sent me there in the first place. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, um, I was put into bridge and it did everything to me. I had been told that I was going to have to stay back, that it was just too much. I had missed way too much school and I was getting similar <coughs> questions from my friends, from other students. Where were you? You're only here like once a week or whatever. And 
it just felt so terrible and I really thought that I would have to stay back but I actually didn't I only went to one day of summer school and I spent the entire month of like May June making up all of my work and I was able to pass and like now I'm going off to college and doing things like that, which is terrifying, not having the bridge program, but they've also set up stuff in place. Like I know what works for me and I can go into college, into the disabilities office and explain that these are the things that I've been given and this is how I know how to succeed. And um, I'm hoping that they'll be kind to me and give me what I need. <laughs> and it's amazing too, because a lot of us going into high school and going into the hospital didn't believe we'd live past like 16, 17. So we never thought we would even be going to college, considering college as an option. And here we are, like yeah. about Absolutely. to like go out into the world. <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. but um, it's, sure. it's really awesome. All right, Sam. hello, my name is Sam. I am a junior here. Um, about two years ago, I moved here from Minnesota. Um, at my old school, like, so like during my freshman year, um, halfway like through the year, and at my old school, there wasn't really anything like the bridge program in place. So like when I went to the hospital, it was kind of like, um, well, like when I went to the hospital, it was there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> when I got back from the hospital, it was kind of like hard because they didn't have anything. Like you could see the guidance counselor, but like if they were available yeah. and most of the time they weren't. So it, you were kind of like, they were kind of like throwing you out there and be like, have fun, <laughs> see ya. But um, yeah, so that was pretty hard. But um, during my sophomore year, which was last year, I was hospitalized and it was a lot better with like the bridge program. Like they helped me kind of get more comfortable with coming to school after it. Um, I kind of knew that I had a good support system. So I was kind of like, I could rely on the program and they helped me get like caught up with all my schoolwork and not really like well going to school like you don't really like yes i want to go to school like <laughs> yay but it makes you want to come to school more than it would without it so it really helped me and um definitely has made me like a lot more stronger and comfortable with mm -hmm. situations and it's also kind of good that you get to kind of like meet other students like yeah i wouldn't know michaela or maggie yeah. Because, like, they're seniors, so I don't have any classes with them. Yeah. So I basically met them in the bridge program, mm -hmm. and it's kind of nice, like, knowing that you aren't the only one going through stuff, mm -hmm. and it's kind of nice that you can, like, relate to stuff, so. Yeah. There are a lot of yeah, things that you sure. never thought you would ever relate to another human yeah. being with on things, and then yeah. we're in the bridge program talking about, oh, yeah, like, I remember yeah, that. Like, sure. yeah, something that happened in the hospital or whatever. Yeah. That's really awesome. And I think the bridge program also opens up a whole new relationship with your teachers, which is very important. Because to me, teachers were an authority figure that were very intimidating and scary. Because they were like, oh, they're the ones yeah. in charge of my ability to graduate. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, don't want to mess with that. Um, but meeting with them with our backups as Ms. Fouth or Ms. Noonan just made us feel more confident about talking to them. Safer, not in the way that we didn't feel safe, but just more comfortable with it. Um, and just makes it so much easier to then talk to them yourselves later on um, in the year when you're not a uh, bridge patient necessarily, you're an alumni. Because yeah. we as alumni, we can use the bridge room itself, we can talk to Ms. Fouth if need be, we do our uh, mental check-ins um, when we come in. That's in your packet too, it's called a mindful yeah. check-in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, and we, we don't really necessarily get academic help unless we specifically ask for it, and normally it's just a small thing. But I know that the bridge program was always there for me, no matter what, and I cannot describe how important that is, especially staying there during lunches or your study today. periods. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> study periods are great. I'm in there practically every day with my study, yeah. and it's just a nice reset to continue on with everything. So. Absolutely. So these are obviously three awesome students who are just role models for current bridge students and for other students in the high school too that you've just come so far and have done so well. And Sam's mom is here and Michaela's mom is here as well as a couple other parents. Do you want, would you like to ask them questions or hear them? Thank you so much for I sharing. Sure. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much.
Michaela's mom here and Sam's Jennifer. mom. Jennifer. Yep. Miss Caswell and Mr. Ocon. Um, I'm Dennis Ocon. My daughter Abby is a ninth grader. Uh, she suffers from emetophobia, which is the fear of vomit, um, which you know, nobody likes that, but this is beyond that. And uh, it manifests itself as separation anxiety and OCD. And she was completely unable to come to school uh, for the first couple weeks. And then I was sitting in with her in the bridge program um, while we were on a wait list for a outpatient program up in Boston. So after uh, about two and a half months of driving up to Boston every single day, um, after she was in school for the first half of the day, um, she's doing much better now. You know, the bridge program got her into school. It gave us a foothold to be here while she was going through this process, mm -hmm. and now it provides her all the support she needs to get to all of her classes. So that's the short of it. Um, Jennifer, I'm Michaela's mom. Um, as she said, freshman year, she was out for quite some time, three hospitalizations. She basically left school in November and didn't return until the end of April. I know she says that she passed the year. She finished the year with a 3.85 GPA. Okay. <laughs> she didn't just pass the year. Um, uh, this year she's hovering somewhere around a 3.9. Yeah. yeah, she's hovering somewhere around a 3.9. She has acceptances to UConn and Syracuse already. Um, I used to have panic attacks every time the phone rang because it would be the school telling me that my daughter's on the way to the ER again and just the anxiety from her of trying to keep up with schoolwork and still focus on her mental health was awful. And now when I get a phone call from the school, it's usually Miss Falls telling me something amazing she's done or the tutoring she's doing with another kid or sometimes just to check in to make sure that I'm okay. So um, yeah, definitely the bridge program has gotten us both here today. Uh, and Deb and Sam is my son. We had two very different experiences, one in Minnesota, which really was we met with the guidance counselor and it was, here's your classes, go to it. Here, it's Miss um, Noonan helped them know, okay, these are your priorities, work on these first. Miss Fowl was there. And what they really do is a bridge because they learn skills while they're in the different hospitalization. But here, when they come back, Ms. Falt is like, okay, what are you doing? What steps should you take next? So reinforcing what they learned in a short time so that they can use it over their lifetime. So this is, this is huge. And if he's having trouble when he first was like, I'm like, just get to bridge and go from there. And sometimes you get to bridge and it's like, well, I can get to class. It was knowing that somebody cared for him. So it's huge. We really have a great program going on. I'm Erin Caswell. So I have a unique experience where my daughter um, was hospitalized twice in her high school career, um, one time without the bridge program, the second time with, and it, it's invaluable. Like it. So um, she, the first time, it was for one week in her sophomore year, it was our first time and we were so like flabbergasted the seven, you know, that this happened. We were struggling and Katie just like, she, um, well, be, this is actually before Katie, when she re-entered the high school and we didn't have Katie in the bridge program, it was like re-enter, here are your classes. What, this is what you need to catch up on that you were behind for schoolwork. But then is also what you need to catch up on with the instruction that you didn't even get. So, you're, so talk about anxiety and depression, which my daughter was, was diagnosed with, you double fold that in with that and, and for her to, to succeed in that reentry is, was almost, was very difficult. So the second time with Katie in the bridge program, it was so, it, her, her, her uh, junior year, which is a difficult academic year, and two weeks of hospitalization, I was panicking as a parent. And she, when Katie got in touch with me and said, hey, there's this new bridge program, I want, you're, not, you're not obligated to join it, but this is what it involves. It was invaluable. 
So it was she had contact with all the all the teachers, and um, was catching her up with her schoolwork that she was behind on, but also made it where she, if she felt ang anxious about coming back to school, that she could go back to Katie and and Miss Noonan with the bridge program and feel very comfortable and confident with re-entering the school. So my daughter now is a uh, as a freshman in college and thriving. So all those all those skills that she learned in the um, hospital setting and with Katie, she's just doing very well. So this is just an invaluable program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the bridge program. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the downside of the bridge program is the fact that we have so many students who need the mental health support. But the upside is that is that we have this wonderful program that obviously has been incredibly successful with 99.9% .9 of the students who've gone through it. Every year we serve between 25 and 35 students in the bridge program, um, which is significant. So are there any questions for anybody? I know you're limited for time, so. How do you uh, explain to the kids in the classroom that their friend and co-student is out? Like how do you, what's the conversation that you have with the rest of the class to help welcome and to not make it weird and awkward when um, the student comes back? Katie um, can speak to that better so, than I can. We, we often leave it, we coach the, the student who's returning, what is the story that they want to tell right, like about when, their lives? Yeah. Yes. And so the teacher themselves wouldn't speak to the class just because the, the student gets the chance to talk to their friends. Or, and to be honest, in high school, sometimes they just slip in and kids just keep on going. Some classes where they're really connected, they would say to their peers, like, this is what I went through. A few students have chosen to say I was sick and that, leave it at that. Okay. Um, so, but we work really closely with the student, like for each class and with each teacher on the dynamic of the class. You know, so if it's, it's a computer class and everyone's kind of doing their own thing, you might just be able to jump on in. If it's a Socratic seminar, small group English class where there's lots of conversation and it's like the huge elephant in the room, then it's an appropriate conversation, but it's always directed by the student and the family, like what they are comfortable with. Okay. And so when, so, but when someone's out and the teacher, you know, gets questions like, where are they? They say, oh, they're out, you know. Right. And I just want to make sure that it's um, the student's story to tell oh, and yeah. not Absolutely. like, oh, yeah. okay. Would, would you say that all the students, at Dart, the majority of students at Fountain High School are knowledgeable of the bridge program and why there is a bridge program? Yes. So if yep. a student comes in and uses the term, I mean, bridge program, yes. there's a pretty good idea that, okay, there's some concerns, we need to support this kid. Right. Yeah, so we've even gotten to the point, though, where we, even when a student maybe has been just out for a week with the flu, we'll get a letter from a doctor saying, the student would, the bridge program would benefit this student. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, right. okay, the word is out there that the bridge program is awesome, but we can't take everybody. Yeah. Right. Right. But we do, we have parents who've called and will say, uh, my child is being hospitalized. I heard about the bridge program. Can you tell me more about it? And um, sure, definitely yeah. the word is out there. Excellent, thank you. So I have two questions. Um, so the first is, so this is the third year, is that right? Okay, so if the alumni can still access the program in the room, um, but you only have really two years of alumni, do you have the capacity that you need? Because you're gonna have more and more alumni that are accessing service in, on top of the growing demand um, and the growing need for kids who are truly just coming out of, I guess I'm, you know, I'm just wondering how you, well, Do you need more people? Yes. <laughs> Patrick Murphy, we need more people. <laughs> um, no, but well, the alumni, and I don't want to speak for Ms. Falth and Ms. Noonan or the students, their level of need and support is, is at a lower level than the other students. And quite frankly, um, I mean, I've been in there and I've seen, you know, Michaela or Maggie even talking to current Bridge students. And that, just that alone, for them to know and understand what someone else is going to and be able to talk to a, a college or a peer who's mm -hmm. been through it is incredible. We do have two rooms and Katie's clinical office is in the middle. We have two classrooms. <coughs> so this year we didn't always have that. The, the space is larger um, and we do have another TA dedicated to it. So I don't want to say, yeah, the alumni add to it. Um, I think actually the bridge intakes, they're just 
oh my gosh, every week we seem to have a new bridge intake. So, and it's, you know, someone's at six weeks into the program, so we get a new person or two new people. So it's always ongoing, but it, it's... So you definitely don't want to ever turn someone down. Right. right. It's a very hard... So you need yes. the capacity. Right, we need the capacity. capacity, yes. Okay, so then my second question is that um, with, uh, with being so, like, at the max of your capacity, then it is... I guess I'm thinking there must be kids on the radar that you're like, that kid is at risk of being hospitalized and then needing the bridge room. What can we do upstream before they fall in the river? Um, but if you're already at your max, how is that something that you try to do, or yes. are you already past the point, you know, in terms of capacity, or are there programs that are like that, like does so Bright have a we, model? <laughs> we have these Thursday meetings every um, week where it's all the guidance counselors, all administration, nurses, um, and adjustment counselors. So at that meeting, someone might say, I put a student who is at high need right now on the a bridge prioritization list. So we have a running list. And it's sort it's sort of a um, a way to rate like how often are they out of school due to their mental health struggles, you know how behind are they in their academics, um, so it kind of fi helps us figure out who do we take next if we have, honestly if we have a week without an intake from a hospital like we will take someone from that other category if you will like category A being right out of the hospital category B being there at high need they're missing school, so someone needs to swoop in so that they don't get hospitalized. And honestly, two things can happen out of that. One is we support, like he was saying, that her, his daughter got into this great program in Boston. That was through the, our, our awesome with mclean relationship and that whole process. So lots of times we'll get kids, we'll help get kids where they need to go if they need a higher level of care. Or bridge will be enough to get them back on their feet, mm -hmm. back into right. the classroom. Right, because, I mean, that's better. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where the numbers get so big, because it's not only discharge of hospitals. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Tara. I just Thank want you. to say that I heard the first two young ladies who were talking say they felt they were the only ones. They were weird, or they were. And the fact that you shared that with us and that you sh share it with your other um, bridge um, classmates and your wonderful role models, and I... I can just feel that you've helped them a lot. So thank you for sharing with us. And, and you're going to do great in college. Too. <laughs> John. No, I just want to say that the staff obviously were very you know, impressed with what you did, did, you know, doing or, and continue to do. And for the students and the parents, I have to say that I admire you. And that what you did tonight, step forward and being so eloquent and sharing, I have no doubt that you're making a real positive impact on other students and parents in the future, so they should be, you know, kudos for that. Thank you. Yeah. I actually, um, Michaela and I are part of a, a teen speakers program for Families for Depression Awareness, which is a lot like this. It's just specifically talking about our experience with depression and anxiety and hospitalizations and all that. So we actually are actively going out to the places we travel and with our group and actually talk about other things as well. So that's great. That's awesome. They're experienced public speakers. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to close with, so Katie and Melissa have done such a great job that even the Bright program has um, used our program as a model program and has suggested that other schools come and visit our program to see um, how well it's run. So kudos to them and to the parents and students here tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time to tell your stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And a lot of you people should be very proud of yourselves. Parents, students, teachers, everybody involved in the Bridge Program should show a great deal of pride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Next on the agenda, first read for fuel efficient vehicle and idling policy in the town of Falmouth. You have that. So I was contacted um, by um, Peter Johnson and he um, indicated back in um, November the town uh, signed on to uh, this policy, and in order to become a um, green community. Uh, the school committee is also required to sign on. And so um, they've asked for uh, the school committee to consider um, signing on to this policy. 
This is just the first read. Um, if you would like additional information, um, I'm looking around because I actually invited someone to come in <laughs> and speak to it. Um, so um, we can certainly get uh, an opportunity, um, hopefully, if you would like, if you have more questions about um, this. I, I will say that uh, we've, uh, uh, Patrick and I have talked to uh, Greg Kennedy. Um, there's not an issue. All of our vehicles are on the newer side, and so we have no issue about uh, making sure that our um, our vehicles meet the fuel efficiency. Um, and we certainly have uh, our policies about no idling. Um, but uh, you know, we can. You know, we we always need to monitor that. I'm just being. <laughs> I don't know, Patrick, if you have anything more yeah. to add. No, that, see, yeah. like we don't see any problem. Yeah, problems. problem with it. No. No. Yes. Again, this is just the first read, and, and uh, if you have any questions, if you could, um, you know, let me know. We could get get someone to answer the questions for you about this. John. Well, just that uh, we just you'd already defined it like the fuel efficiency are kind of within the realm of what we're doing mm -hmm. now, so yep. it's not pushing for propane no. or anything like no. that. No. And the only question that I have is. Um, is on the idling because I know there's a big push in, in you know in Manhattan for this and yep. and they actually have a campaign with Billy Idol as a spokesman. <laughs> and it says Bill, uh, Billy doesn't idle. It's just a kind of campaign. Uh, and um, and the but on the on the flip side of it, I do see that you know with us you know being a little more spread out, it's not as congested. I'm just concerned if it gets a little overboard with you know turning off and on because then you have. You know the ignition challenges or something if they're constantly going off and on. I, it might not get to that de degree, but that's just something that I think you know could be incorporated into the thought process. Yeah. It, it, so bus, buses. There's been uh, there's been policies to limit buses idling in and around schools for many many years. So the behavior. We have signs of yeah. The, beha properties. the behavior that drivers understand what behavior is expected. Cool. Okay. Um, Sure. Pretty soon, we'll, I don't think we'll have to make that decision because newer cars, if you are idling, they just shut off. Yeah. So it's, and I remember in Germany probably 20 years ago, um, people at the stop signs would turn the stoplights would turn the cars off, and I thought, what's up with that? You know, um, bec but I, I guess it is efficient. Anyway, like I said, new cars do it automatically. So. You're correct on that. Any others? Any other questions? Okay, so that's the first read. Did you get any questions? Just refer them to Patrick or uh, Joe. We're going to act on the collective bargaining contracts for Unit A, B, C, and D. Uh, we'll do these individually. So I need a motion to approve A, which is the teacher's union. And, uh, okay. um, make a motion. One second. One second. Sorry. I apologize for that as well. Yes, and, and Terry, who is a retired educator in the school district, has recused herself. I make um, a motion to accept Unit A's contract. Is there a second? Second. Natalie is a second. Any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. All those in favor? Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. John? Yes. 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 Unit B, which would be the assistant principals, the SEBAs, uh, the special education, athletic director, uh, department heads, director of guidance. Uh, so Unit B, all, uh, I need a motion to uh, approve. I make a motion to approve the collective bargaining contracts for Unit B. A second? Second. Discussion? Uh, a comment that I will make. Um, as a former administrator, 
the degree of respect and admiration I have for assistant principals, special education, anybody administratively in the B unit, uh, I think their job is tremendously difficult and they do a tremendous job. But the old school in me is I would love to see down the road that uh, the sides look at the possibility of additional days to contracts. Uh, again, the respect is without question in my mind as a assistant principal and as a head principal, but I always like that opportunity to serve kids on a longer duration and that would mean more days. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, vote, roll call please, John? Yes. 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 Okay, we'll go to unit C, which would be the teaching assistants. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the contract for unit C. Second. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Discussion? Roll call, please. John? Yes. 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 And unit D, which is the nurses. I'll make a motion to accept that. Thank you. Second. I'll make a second. Discussion. Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Job well done. Okay. We're going to act on the Mass Science and Engineering Fair at MIT May 1st, 2020 and May 2nd, 2020. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. Thank you guys for having me. I'll just report out on our fair. Um, so the fair was on February 29th, uh, 28th and 29th, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was fortunate to see many of you guys there, and I appreciate that. Uh, we, I was also fortunate to have good weather, so it was the first time in a couple years, which was great. Um, it was a great turnout. You know, we're still working on, you know, there's some highs and lows here and there, um, but I think the overall atmosphere is very positive, uh, and one of the things that always reinvigorates me is that uh, I'm able to recruit, like, well over 100 judges from the community, and these aren't just your normal day-to-day -day citizens. These are acting practicing engineers and scientists which provide our students kind of a very rigorous uh, experience, a judging experience that they don't necessarily get in all, all of the districts. Uh, and I love talking to them at the end uh, because whether they're talking to a kindergartner or to a kid who's going off to Yale next year or something, they're always telling me just, you know, again, these are people who have, you know, uh, a lot of experience themselves, but they're also talking, they always tell me about how just amazed they are at the kid's ability to communicate their poise, their knowledge of the subject matter, their energy and enthusiasm. Uh, and I've even had judges saying that like, they could never imagine you know, doing a project that some of these kids did when they were their age. Uh, you know, I've even had judges say, like, we're still exploring this kind of stuff in our labs, uh, which is a great thing to hear. Kind of reminds us why we're doing all this. Um, so we had a great experience. Our uh, Founders Award winner were the third grade team from T-Ticket. So uh, congratulations to them. We are able to award our students thousands and thousands of dollars worth of prizes because uh, we have many various and generous donors in town, which uh, add that another little uh, element to our fair. Um, the Falmouth STEM Boosters were able to use donations from Windfall Market and Martha's Vineyard Bank to provide a luncheon for our juniors, uh, not juniors, sorry, junior high students and our high school kids. Again, to kind of reward them for their hard work uh, prior to the award ceremony. So I appreciate the. STEM boosters for everything they do, not just that, but they ma maintain uh, mentoring relationships and they bring in uh, just people to talk to kids, get them thinking. You know, they're even just constantly emailing me like, hey, you should talk to this kid about this idea and such. Uh, helping those kids kind of come over the hump because it's, it's a lot to ask these students with everything else they have going on to do the projects. Um, we sent a few, number, a few kids to the regional fair the past weekend. Um, so even though it was only three kids, which is technically a low number for us, we walked out with two prizes. So, you know, two out of three is actually a pretty good ratio. It's a small <laughs> number, but it's a good ratio. Uh, and so two kids earned entry uh, directly into the state fair, uh, and we're allowed to send a couple extra kids. So we're sending the three students to the state fair. 
with that, um, we got an email yesterday from the State Fair that said they are in limbo right now. MIT is kind of a little apprehensive to have such a, a large event. They're not outright saying that it's not going to happen this year. They really obviously on their end want it to happen. They're uh, not even saying it's not going to be that weekend either. Um, but they, they, have to, they might have to approach it differently than they have in the past. But as of right now, the State Fair is Friday, May 2nd, May, uh, Saturday, May, sorry, Friday, May 1st, Saturday, May 2nd at MIT uh, until we get further word. So I would just like your permission to bring those students to the State Fair should it still happen. Motion? Well, we need a motion to discuss it, so I'll move that we yes. accept this uh, request. A second. A second. second. Now discussion. Any discussion? Questions? Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> so I know, I mean, I don't want to say that they shouldn't go, but I'm nervous about sending them. Um, do you have any thoughts? I mean, you're like knee deep in this, yeah. so. Uh, so. So yeah, so the recommendation um, from, you know, the you know, now our governor, from our state department, um, from the uh, Massachusetts Health Department is, you know, we, we shouldn't be traveling um, by, by plane and we shouldn't be in large crowds. It is gonna be a large crowd. I think that the, the information that uh, Corey just shared with us, I think that's why they're considering the large, cr mm -hmm. large crowd. I would like to think that they are going to change the format this year um, or possibly postpone. I don't know how, you know, what, what that might look like. Uh, but they're obviously thinking about another venue, another way of possibly having it um, either back, you know, somehow being able to judge or have it virtually. Um, I'd like to think that that's how it'll end up. Um, I don't know. I, I don't want them not to participate. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, what, what I'd really like to do from what we knew last week when we met and talked to what we know this week when we talked, it's it's very different, and a week from now could be different as well. And so, um, would I feel comfortable right now saying yes? Would I feel comfortable in a week? I can't say that I would. And so, I guess if we if we could, so that we may not have to have a special meeting to come back, or maybe we do have time between now and then. Um, you know, I think we, we we need to find out how they're going to um, address this, right? And I don't know if we can. You know, do a pending or a. Or can we just approve it and then and if you have to, you just pull the plug. Well, you know, yes, without sorry. having to come back on a special <laughs> special meeting. If you want, yeah, I'm if, fine you wanna, with that. if you want to, you want to set the uh, the um, motion or adjust the motion for that, then that would that would give us that authority to continue to work and see what's what's best as things progress. Because what everyone's saying, you know, this is just fluid, and what we know today is going to be different tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So can I amend the motion? Mm -hmm. sure. All right. So I'll amend the motion to say we approve this pending any further developments that Lori will make the decision upon. I know that I ended with a preposition, but <laughs> Sonia forgives you. <laughs> so we haven't so, we haven't done the job. So currently, uh, Corey. So currently, you said MIT is looking at different ways because yeah. I know that the Ivy League. Basketball conference yeah. just was canceled. Mm -hmm. So it, I mean, they sent an email yesterday, and it wasn't as direct as I wish it would have been. I wish they basically said like clear cut, it's not happening, or whatever. It basically said MIT is questioning any event that has any uh, people larger than 150 people until May 29th or 15th or something like that. And they said on their end, you know, it sounds like MIT is trying to obviously cancel, um, but the state fair obviously wants to reward these kids for their hard work and they suggested you know if that doesn't happen they're suggesting maybe like small pocket fairs you know put the kids in smaller numbers which is kind of like what the regional fair was all about um, or doing something virtual which would be totally new to me but I would think MIT has uh, enough knowledge to do something virtually with these kids yeah uh, from a technological standpoint I think they would be second to none yeah right. <laughs> uh, I read the same thing about the 150 and, and my response to that was Really? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I agree with you. I wish they would have been more direct. Yeah. But I, I would think as things progress or do not progress, then I think those those decisions can be made. But mm -hmm. I think the addendum is, is appropriate. So we, need a, we need a second on the addendum. No, I'll second it. 
Any discussion on the addendum? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next. I'm going to act on the Hershey Park trip, April 17th through the 20th, 2020. So this was a, uh, a, um, a trip that you previously approved. I'm bringing back um, before you um, tonight uh, with the recommendation that we cancel this trip. Um, the teacher, the department head, and the principal, and myself are all in agreement. And the governor. And the governor. <laughs> <laughs> we can have the governor in. Anyway. <laughs> and the governor, yes. Yeah. Um, so. Motion. I'll make a motion motion to cancel the trip because it's out of the state second second discussion the only Shall discussion I? point i have that when they do go that they still go to the city island in harrisburg like <laughs> <I suggested>, so. <laughs> yeah. I, would I was looking job, forward to seeing them you know there's a beautiful bridge yes that go <laughs> uh, any discussion any other discussion all those in favor of canceling the trip? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. That's with an abundance of caution. But <laughs> okay. Act on the transportation contract. Is that Lucini? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Transportation. A motion? I make a motion to approve the transportation contract with Lucini Transportation. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's the transportation contract with the Sini Transportation is passed. <coughs> Act on article number 36, rooftop solar. Uh, I would um, suggest that we don't act on it. I know it says act, but that doesn't mean we have to. Um, I think we don't typically weigh in on petitioner's articles or warrant articles. Um, I mean, it, and I think it would help if we, it may help um, town meeting approve something if it has support of us, but if we end up not uh, supporting it, it would be to their detriment, and I think that's something town meeting should, should be deciding, not necessarily us. Any other comments? I'm very uncomfortable having this conversation, uh, not with the rest of the body of town meeting. Any other comments? I look at two things in this that concern me. Assess for appropriateness, and should the location be found to be economically feasible for solar collection? I guess I would like maybe a little bit more on that. So I would look to see if I could get more information. So I could look to say I could table this from my standpoint. But if we have the appropriateness to vote on this and to suggest that we do not, then that's up to us as a group. Any other questions, concerns? So we would need then a motion to table, to table. table. table or not act. To table it or not act. I make a motion that we table the support for Article 36 rooftop solar. Second. Discussion on tabling it. Can I just say that? By tabling it doesn't mean that we don't think it's a good idea. We just need more information and to work with the town meeting members. Uh, I would like more information. Any other comments? So we're going to act on article number 36, rooftop solar. We're going to table that. All those in favor? Of tabling it. Oh, table. Yeah. Yes, okay. I mentioned that. Yeah, I just yes. want to make sure. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to vote for that. Yeah. Yes. Second? 
for us. I already seconded. Yeah. 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 We already had a motion. To the table, we did? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Sorry. All those in favor of tabling it? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll table I'm abstaining. No. Okay. One abstention. Going to act on policy section I. Motion to accept policy section I. I'll make a motion being on the policy committee <laughs> to section I. Accept it. I'll a second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, aye. Policy <laughs> section? Abstain. Aye. Passed and one abstention. Act on calendar 2021 2022. That one caught me when I just looked at the dates. <laughs> what? what? Say two, two yes, years it's ahead. like, right. okay. I'll make uh, a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the school calendar 2021 to 2022. Second. Second. All those in favor? Oh, excuse me, discussion. Um, I just want to have it in the record that like the the list on the back um, we had not seen prior to our packet, and I just want to register my objection to listing continuing to list Columbus Day. I know we have um, discussed it in the past. We had the calendar committee, um, and that didn't go anywhere. But I would be going against my you know, moral compass if I didn't acknowledge that I think that that is a poor decision to recognize that holiday in that way. Um, but aside from that, I do think it is so awesome for our families that we are a year ahead. I think it makes everyone's life, um, just, it's just, it's so thoughtful. Um, so I really appreciate that it wasn't a one-time deal and we actually are sticking with that, keeping on schedule two years at a time. Thank you. Any other comments, John? Yeah, I just have a comment, like on the other section where it was uh, noted to that we sh agree with the governor, uh, that I agree with the governor that it's a state holiday, and I, I'm proud as an Italian-American uh, as well, and the, the history of Columbus Day also, that it is on there. And I actually uh, am disappointed that we can't be mature enough to actually note that the uh, non-secular reason why we have Good Friday off can't just be called that it's Good Friday as well. It has no school, but I'm fine with the fact that it's no, it says no school. Uh, but that's my only comment. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the school calendar for 2021, 2022? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. The school calendar 2021, 2022 is passed. Present policy section J. Tell you. Yes. So first, um, thank you very much for approving section I. And just when you thought I was a long section, we introduced J. <laughs> yes. um, J is the longest of the sections, and uh, there are only two sections following this. So this what? is uh, the last of the of the big uh, collections. Uh, we're presenting it again in the same fashion in which we presented the previous sections. So it starts off with all of the standing policies. There are a couple um, where you're going to notice that the policy is being recoded. They're not changing, like nothing within the language is changing. Um, they are being recoded. And then um, beyond that, we move into revised policies. Again, there are language changes. Um, as well as some coding changes within there just to make sure that we're aligned and things follow the sequence. So if you want to look back to the model uh, manual at MASC, we're the same system. Uh, followed by new policies. There are um, a number of those being introduced. Um, eliminated policies. Again, there is a list of those, many of which, like Section I, um, include language that's being moved to the student and family handbooks. Um, to cover those practices, so we're not eliminating, they're just moving to the more procedural side. Um, and then finally, there is one item that's on hold for continued conversation, um, and that's listed there at the end, and the language follows at the back of the packet. Okay. Questions? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
questions for Sonia. Do I actually entertain the questions about policy, or you want to? Wait until, are we, we're doing the next one? Yeah, the ne next one is discussion. But okay. If you yeah. have any questions, yeah, I mean, you have any fun. questions, just quickly. Okay. I mean, um, no, we have a bunch of them, so I feel like that would suck up okay. unnecessarily. So I will hold them. Okay. The next. Time. Or you can send them to me. Okay. Are we going to have you a meeting again? meeting before their next? Not before the next mm -hmm. one. No. Oh, sorry. So our next meeting is the 24th, which would be discussion, and then the 30th um, is our scheduled meeting before you actually vote. So that's okay. So you yeah. would have time in between oh, yes. our next meeting yep. and the one. Okay. okay. Yes. And I'll just yep. hold it all for that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. Okay. Discussion on Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Student Opportunity Act SOA. So you know, last year we had, uh, in, um, in the fall, we had a lot of conversation about the uh, Chapter 70 and the reform. Um, and the Student Opportunity Act uh, is the, the result of that. It's passed, um, uh, we have the, the governor's proposed. Um, now it still has the budget part of it has to be passed um, through the House and, and Senate, um, so we'll be waiting through the budget process for the money that was actually allocated. Um, but prior to that, um, each district ha has a plan that is due um, April 1st uh, to the State Department. So uh, they split the districts. Um, districts that are getting more than 1.5 million have a long form. Those that are getting less than 1.5 million can complete the short form. And they, um, if you select a research-based um, um, program, I don't want to say program because it's not really a program, but a strategy, I'll do a strategy, um, <laughs> for, then um, uh, they encourage that, right? If you want to go outside the box of that, you can also, but they did give a, a rest of pretty much pre-approval on um, certain strategies. Uh, we are slated um, to um, have, if it passes through the budget, um, 90, 96,600 and some, almost 97,000. Um, but as Chapter 70 works, the money goes through to the town. And um, so we may or may not see those dollars. Um, so it's going to be kind of difficult, and the other superintendents agree as we are talking, it's kind of difficult to plan on how to use the money, and we may or may not see that. Um, but with that said, with positive intent, uh, we are moving forward, and um, we have, um, we, I wanna, we wanna share tonight, I'm gonna have Sonia share tonight what our plan is around, and then we do have a community forum. Uh, it's in your packet, I wanna just, you know, state next um, Wednesday, March 18th at 6.30 at Morse Pond, and we invite everyone to come and just hear, we'll um, share a little bit um, uh, more about um, the plan. We can actually show a plan out. We actually just got the form uh, late this afternoon um, to complete, so we don't have it for you tonight to share because we just got it. Uh, so um, let's talk a little bit about what we think that we wanted to do anyway, uh, regardless of whether um, the Student Opportunity Act was coming our way or not. Um, there are some positive things that we wanted to um, move forward with. So, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're looking at our early learners, our youngest learners um, from pre-K to kindergarten and perhaps extending into first and second grade. We've been really looking at studying um, their literacy curriculum. We've been studying their math curriculum. Um, the math coaches and the elementary uh, literacy manager have been helping with that. And so we're looking at uh, possibly changing the way in which we communicate their growth and success. Um, outside of the report card structure was something that is um, more relevant to them as, as young learners as well as to their families and sort of measuring their success over time as opposed to a more traditional um, report card uh, method. And then along with that, aligning our professional learning, our PD, and knowing that um, to the point that you raised about having two years of the calendar, articulating what that professional learning would be over those two years and knowing those days are, are set aside. So we're looking at putting that together and, and building that out and just putting that into our vertical alignment plan across all disciplines. I, I have never thought about the fact that having the calendar actually allows for planning professional development. Mm -hmm. So it's good for you Lots too. of different ways, right? <laughs> 
it's been pretty powerful to set the tool up and put the days and then sit down and figure out how to do things over time and all that. Any other questions? I think it's. I think that sounds really great, and just um, you know, working with the younger population, I think it's great to kind of step back from that whole academic um, role, even though it's important. But uh, you know, sometimes a report card in kindergarten might not be the best way to kind of gauge what children are learning. So I think um, anything we can do to encourage um, kids to play and be social and learn the rules of society and you know get a little away from the um the rigidness of report cards i think is great it's my personal so we started conversations um with the math coaches elementary literacy manager the principals to start building some awareness and capacity and figuring out what that means to bring um, teachers on board and what that means for the demand on time and mm -hmm. ultimately what the timeline would be for rolling it out but, yeah. thank you it's exciting yeah <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Karen. Is our is our um, maker spaces aligned in with this thinking too? I mean, where individuals have opportunities, so we're kind of on board with that aspect. Too, yes, right? absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for thinking of that, Terry. <laughs> Would this be a good um, observation? Well, sure. <laughs> in case anyone's looking for something. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just thinking people might be interested and be there anyway, so. Right. right. Conduct routine business. Approved minutes of February 25th, 2020. Motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the minutes of February 25th, 2020. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion for to approve the minutes from February 25th, 2020 is approved. Next. Approved minutes for March 3rd, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 3rd, 2020. A second. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Approved minutes for March 3rd, 2020 is passed. Updated on capital plan by Mr. Murphy. Sure, thank you very much for a few minutes. I, I just want to make sure that the school committee is aware of what what's, uh, will be going on in, in a couple of our schools. <laughs> our capital process uh, is a long process. It, it literally started the day after money was approved uh, in November at the time meeting. The calls went out to, to start the process. We have two projects that have very heavy uh, uh, procurement and design um, processes that are, we're, we're, bringing to, uh, we're bringing to the end of uh, phase one of awarding the contract and then we'll be starting the projects this, this summer. So the first one is uh, the East Falmouth project, which is the Univent and uh, control replacement. That, that's the second phase of replacing the boilers. We're in, um, in the process of reviewing contracts now. I just want to give it to the school committee's attention. I, I'm in contact with the vendor. The turnaround time between uh, to order the Univents is typically about 12 weeks. Um, we need them to start the day after school starts, so we're going to be doing some back and forth. The reason I'm bringing that to your attention is, is based upon our calendar of meetings, we might be asking uh, to move forward with a letter of intent or something like that just to make sure before uh, completing the contract just to make sure that uh, the the vendor has the ability to order the equipment and the second project which will again come to your attention over the next uh, uh, few meetings is the Morse Pond uh, ceiling replacement project that's uh, our effort to remove all the um, ceiling tiles that have our ACM asbestos containing materials uh, and more spawn uh, we just to, 45 minutes ago I received a call from the OPM there were 10 bidders for that project which is huge 
So we got very competitive bids, very pleased with how that's going. Again, we're going to be out of time constraint to make sure that the, that vendor is ready to start that project as soon as school is up. So um, if I start getting pushy about getting contracts in front of you, that's why. we got to get these contractors ready to go into our buildings. Kids go out, construction people mm -hmm. come in. Yep. <laughs> questions for Patrick? And if you think of questions on any of these projects, just give me a call. Okay. Thank you. Uh, superintendent report. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Okay, so um, we've had a busy couple weeks. Uh, so Principal Gans and I attended an awards um, ceremony at the uh, Falmouth Police Department. Our own uh, SRO, Ryan Hurt, was um, uh, announced and recognized as the Police Officer of the Year, and mm -hmm. um, we couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's sure. awesome. So it was a very nice event. I also, uh, three of our students were also recognized. Um, actually, um, Officer Hurt put their names forward for kind of being uh, heroes and stepping in on a, a situation um, in the school. They actually de-escalated on their own uh, before staff could even get there, and uh, it actually turned out um, exactly the way we would want it to, and so the three students were actually recognized for that too. So that was nice to have um, those recognitions. Um, the, uh, we had a, a homework advisory committee um, meeting, and during that time we reviewed policies from five other Massachusetts school districts that within the last uh, few years have also worked on their policies so we could see some of the um, changes that they've made. So we're on schedule. Uh, we have two more uh, meetings scheduled, um, and then hopefully we'll have some recommendations and be able to move forward. So very pleased with that. Um, Corey Dubuque said everything wonderful about the, the science fair that I was going to say. I just uh, echo everything he said. It's a, it's a great event. The students are fantastic. Their, their projects are very relevant uh, and exciting, and so uh, good for them. I will bring in about the makerspace because the uh, T-Ticket third grade group project, um, the students actually tested out their theories in the makerspace, so that's how they built theirs. So it was, um, it was great, they were so proud of how they did it, so that was pretty awesome. Um, it was Read Across America, and we had our central office staff go out and read, so I just got a couple snapshots there, Dr. Tellier and uh, uh, Dr. Santa uh, reading um, to the students, so that's always a lot of fun um, to pick our books and, and get out there. Um, we had uh, last week and uh, Monday night, we were out, um, the school, all of you, but to tell everyone else, we were out um, gathering information on our draft uh, mission, vision, and core values. And I am proposing that we have a workshop on March 31st to review the feedback and to finalize um, the mission, vision, and core values. So. Um, that would work. It's a Tuesday night. It's a 30, 30, 31st. 31st. Yep. Sorry, 31st. Yeah. Our next school committee meeting is in two weeks on the 24th, and then that would be the week after that if people are available um, so that we can actually share something out. We will actually meet our timeline uh, if we get something out in April, <laughs> which is pretty exciting. <laughs> so. Is there a time Do for that? or? Um, so yeah. Do you want to know now if we can all make it? You yeah, if you want oh, okay. to, that'd be great. If you, if you can, we can set it at whatever time you want. I just was suggesting a Tuesday since we're normally um, scheduled for Tuesdays. It. Okay. So a 5.30, worth. we were doing 5.30 to 5 7. hard. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. 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 No, I was just saying we were, our other workshops were 5.30 to 7. Okay. Okay. Motion? I can do it. Excellent, thank you. We just need to send it out to yep. Andrew. Absolutely. Mind our thirty. Yep. Share share that. Send that out. Thank you. We'll have March thirty first. Okay. okay. So, um, Sonia, you want to talk a little bit about the next one, our spring partnership one? Certainly. Um, yesterday, Lori and I had the opportunity to meet with our liaisons from each of the agencies. And we talked a little bit about um, some of the preparations, both for upcoming um, learning opportunities for our students, as well as for the partnership forum. So we sent a template out today. Um, if they want to pitch new ideas, or if they want to pitch ideas that will extend the three strands that are going on right now, 
and then being able to report out on progress. Um, so our um, elementary focus on the relationship between um, people and the earth uh, we're working on the Earth Day Summit. We're working on the Green Bus Tour. Um, so we're looking at how that's coming together. And I heard from our elementary math coaches that they're looking at pitching an idea that connects into that for this year. So that's one of the big um, things we're looking forward to at the forum. Um, our middle grades, we have uh, our extended group looking at going up to Cuddy Hunk to grow that pilot among other opportunities. Um, so we're looking potentially for another pitch in that. Um, opportunity and then at the high school level our partnership with USGS has added Woods Hole Research Center to that and they're extending their look at mapping and how they use some of the data to create some of the visuals to really track change over time so it's continuing to grow we're going to be reporting out on um, those three strands as well as welcoming pitches to uh, continue to develop opportunity so I invite all of you to join join us if you can Could be another opportunity Another option. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be done Kelly? Oh, we will be done. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, we will. All right. Yes, we will. Well, if we're on our new timeline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can okay. observe this for next year. For next year. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, when we, uh, at, we're at North Falmouth, um, uh, our, uh, Jack, our student um, liaison, um, presented a couple different things and we said we would gather information. Uh, so um, the first one was on the funding for uh, Falmouth High School Clubs. Um, Patrick, would you like to speak to that, please? Oh, sure. Yes. Mary Gans and I did meet with with the student, and, and as I pointed out in the little memo, there, there was only one specific instance that he was raising. Um, uh, Principal Gans is uh, is very consistent in her messaging to club advisors uh, around sort of if there's supplies and materials that are needed to help that we can support that. If uh, young people are having trouble uh, with funding for, for special events or trips, uh, it doesn't have to be club related, anything related to schools that, that uh, we need to identify those students and find ways to make sure that they are participating. So it felt like the, uh, from Principal Gann's perspective, that our messaging out to um, club advisors and staff is pretty consistent. So, um, anything else? No, no yeah. that's good, thank you. And then the second um, issue that he had brought up was about the weighted grading. Um, Sonia, do you want to speak to that? There's a sure. um, memo in the uh, packet. So I also um, had the opportunity to speak with Principal Gans, and um, Principal Gans and I spoke with Jack, so the three of us met together as well, just to get a little bit more clarity. Um, he had shared with us that he had surveyed some of his peers, so we wanted to understand how far reaching um, the survey was. And so we dug a little deeper, and then I had an opportunity to also speak to some of the other instructional leadership members at the high school, because through the self-study and the NEAS process in which they're engaged, and that sort of introspection that the um, school communities going through, they've been studying um, their ranking and GPA systems as well. Um, and then they've also been reaching out to the Cape Islands community to understand what other districts are doing around that. And I think even the link to some of the stories that the students shared with us tonight about Bridge, talking a lot about um, anxiety and the competition that they're creating, and actually really talking to admissions counselors. And so there's an article in there that I cited, and I could also uh, print it and make it available to you. Um, which was really a great compilation of talking to admissions counselors, high school guidance counselors, um, and bringing that all together and just looking at the fact that each institution runs its own formula anyway for admissions purposes, and they actually disregard a lot of the formulas that we use in our schools. Um, so there is a, a bigger national dialogue around actually moving away from some of the waiting systems. Um, and we already don't uh, honor valedictorian and salutatorian because our ranking system is set up in deciles it's only when a college university or scholarship application asks for it that that information even is divulged um, but some of the other districts around us including Barnesville are only reporting to the students and therefore the applications those deciles so it's just you know a great opportunity to sit down um, both with principal hands and then to sit with some of the instructional leadership members and understand more about the depth of the conversation um, they're having and how they're going to be having that as well with students 
I would enjoy the opportunity to get some of your information and read it. I would like to see how it's changed <coughs> by addressing it, whatever mm -hmm. the terminology may be. But I'd like to take a good look at that. Thank you. I, I really appreciated this. I found this so interesting, and it was not at all the way that I initially thought about it. Um, so I just, I really, first of all, I really appreciate that we took the time to like actually look at our student advisories issues and, and do some research and then follow up on it. Um, but I, ju I, I just really appreciate it. I thought it, it completely changed my opinion <laughs> on the whole thing just by reading this one memo. Um, so thank you for that. Any other questions for Sonia? Okay, just a reminder um, that the FEA, FEF Gala, the <laughs> Falmouth Education Foundation um, Gala is uh, Saturday, March 21st at 6 o'clock, and um, the reception is 7 o'clock dinner. Um, there's a picture in here that um, just doesn't do it ju justice, but it does because it's beautiful. But if I really encourage, it's just big and overwhelming, and it's, there's two sides. This is only one picture. But at North Falmouth, this was one of the grants that, um, that North Falmouth had received, and they had the artists come in, um, and it's just fascinating, uh, the mural going into North. And then the students are now making their th own 3D um, characters or um, fish or what, what, whatever they want to imagine based on uh, being able to, to, to read the story and, and the, the article. And it's, it's really, you know, kind of cool. So I did want to share that. It's, uh, it's nice. Um, so I just wanted to, um, I put out a memo um, yesterday for everyone um, about how the Falmouth Public School is reacting to uh, or responding to um, the, the, um, the broader outbreak. Uh, we certainly are not at a point uh, yet in uh, Falmouth that there's any presumptive cases, um, but it is I think, <coughs> very important for us to um, be preventive and to educate as much as we can. And I think from the other districts, the superintendents is one of the things that they're sharing out, um, is making sure that we are ahead of the message as much as we can in the school district prior to there uh, being any incidents. And, um, so I just um, really appreciate the colleagues that are going before us to have to deal with things that, that is certainly helping us make things um, go smoother. And so, mm -hmm. have we? Have you thought of anything about if we were to have to close a, a school? I mean, maybe I shouldn't be asking that, but it's. I think it's on our heads, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's on yeah. everyone's mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I mean, it absolutely may be poss uh, possible that that will be the recommendation. Mm -hmm. What is being told from us from everyone is that we need to work very closely with our um, local health department, which is getting the guidance from the Massachusetts Health Department and CDC. And so all decisions will be made as a team. Um, I think um, that I shared that you know we, we now have a command team all the department heads coming together. We are weekly, we're working um, to stay abreast of all new information and it is developing daily um, as you, um, obviously, all the news uh, reports coming out um, share with that. So, um, you know, if, that's, if that is the case, then, you know, we would have, we'd have to make that decision and we're pre prepared to do that if, if need be. I think the most important thing we're doing right now is the, the cleaning, the vigilance of um, teaching the kids about the hand washing, which is the absolute most important, um, the sneezing and the coughing in the elbow, you know, and um, the, I think our staff is really good about uh, making sure that we're, we're really staying on top of all those pieces. And I think that's what we can do right now. Those are our preventive measures of um, even with the flu. And we've been checking our attendance numbers. I will say that it really has not changed much over the um, course of the flu season. And I think that's just a testament that we are really, that we put measures in even with the flu. And I think that we're, we're not seeing drastic um, decline in attendance numbers. Uh, so it says a lot for our, our staff and our schools and our, our families um, that stay on top of things. Sure. Along with that, are we in any way prepared for any kind of virtual teaching? Do we have anything we can do in that direction? So, and I don't yeah, mean to yeah. be, pessimistic and 
panic monitoring. But. Yeah, no, I think it's an absolute good question, and I, and I would like to discuss that. Um, I know that in the news, colleges are daily. Our colleges are already set up um, uh, in their, their system and has been for years to be able to do that. Uh, we are going to be there. Um, we're not quite there uh, yet. I don't know if, um, would you like to speak a little bit on the side about how we are getting prepared for that um, when the day comes? But um, there just needs to be some professional learning before we get there. We have secured a learning management system, um, so Schoology is going to be our provider. We're working with our Tech for Learning, which is our steering committee, to, to build that out. We've done some training. Um, in the interim, we're also looking at some of the programs that we've been using and building those out and trying to provide access for those. So before all of our courses are built out as full online courses, some of the tools we're using and being able to use those. So we are actually... Um, meeting to have continuity of learning planning sessions which is really about like if we do have to close for a day a week up to two weeks whatever the case may be we have plans around the continuity of learning which may include you know students using found materials in their home um, to go through a math exercise or using books that may be available at home to move through um, a literacy exercise so we're starting to put some of those ideas together, um, and I've begun to talk with um, several of the members of our teaching and learning team, and so we're going to be building into some bigger conversations in the coming days. John? Well, we, uh, we have a virtual classroom now. It's just scalability, right? I mean, we do have for one, you know, for we, individual. We absolutely have yeah. some opportunities, um, but it, it's just that we are not at scale in the endowment yet. The other thing I was going to say is, is uh, you know, great job, you, you and the whole team, you know, throughout all the schools, the principals, the uh, the teachers, the admin, you know, the, everyone, and the bus drivers. It's uncharted territory, you know, uncharted waters that you're navigating. And uh, with the notion of sharing, I was actually on a, a conference call this afternoon, Mass Restaurant Association, National Restaurant Association. I'm going to share some best practices, uh, getting more of uh, the details of that call. I'll share it over with you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Kelly. So, like we were just talking about with MIT um, and the smaller, whatever, gatherings or whatever they're calling them, is there any guidance about things like that? Because that's something, I, it's not that I'm worried about, um, like, the day-to-day -day school. I know school is going to go on for now, we hope. Um, but the extra things, like after-school concerts or sporting events, things where lots of people gather, and in a community that's, you know, our it looks like kids are really resilient with this, um, but we live in like the oldest county in America, I think outside of Florida. So I worry about our older population and all our little people being vectors all over the place. So is there any yeah. guidance about what to do preventatively to protect our community as well? So um, that's going to end up changing daily too. I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to get out of the answer, but no, I, I'll just give you a fair. couple examples. Um, uh, tomorrow night we have all bands night, and um, that is a Falmouth um, activity, and uh, so we are moving forward with that. Although it is well attended, um, you know we do not have a presumptive case in Falmouth, and we feel safe that we can move forward with that. But we do recommend, as uh, the Commissioner Riley put out today, that um, that we encourage our older community um, and people that are their immune system is at risk that they may want to uh, wait and watch it. So it is going to be filmed, and then it will be on channel 14. So um, there, there's an opportunity for them to see. So I think that you know we want people to make good decisions around that. On the opposite end of that, we were hosting a regional um, music um, opportunity on Friday and Saturday at the high school. And that meant many districts um, in Massachusetts, in our regional area, uh, larger, uh, also includes the south, south Coast. east <laughs> part of uh, Massachusetts and the Cape and Islands, um, and we did cancel that um, because it is the larger community. It was a very large, and it was you know bringing a large number in our, our school uh, at that time. So, we, with an abundance of caution, that may have been fine, but I think that's where we're right now. That could change daily, right? We could have more information tomorrow. Um, there is a um, a call that the departments, um, the health departments are on tomorrow 
They may learn new guidance, which we will receive at our meeting on Friday, and by Friday, there may be additional information. So I just want to make sure that people understand that if we put out something and say something today, in two days that could be different. And I ask people to, to be understanding about that. Um, so right now that's our thinking, that anything that's local, we had, still had the art show last night at uh, Lawrence, um, but it was you know contained to the, to the one area. But again, if you, know, you have a compromised immune system, um, the older generation, which this seems to, to be attacking, we, you know, we ask you to make good decisions, right? And if there's ways that we can film or ways that we can share it in other you know, ways, the events, because they are wonderful events and we don't want um, students not to be able to showcase, right? Yeah. But, um, but it is, they're trying times and I think we have to yeah. figure out how to balance. Um, just adding into that, um, Commissioner Riley, a couple days ago put out um, some guidance around the 180 day uh, requirement um, since you'd ask about the um, that piece of it, I just want to share a little bit. Um, and it just got updated as of today. So I was going to share the March 6th guidance, but I'm going to share the March 10th guidance because <laughs> oh it's changed. Uh, so, um, so as far as the day scheduling uh, from the first day of school through March 15th, um, we need to reschedule full days as um, as we would normally do. If we reach up. Um, from March 16th to June 1st, we need to make sure that we're um, reaching our previously scheduled days up to that 185, 185th day. And then um, any days after June 1st will not be expected to be made, for, uh, made up. So um, those dates actually got tweaked between the 6th and the 10th, and this is where we are now. Um, that, again, might change next week, right? And so I just want to know that they're, they're on top of it, they're providing us guidance around the, the requirement days and, and days that may, may be forgiven, and, and we'll just continue to look at that and, and stay on top of it. And right now we've had a great winter, even though, <laughs> you know, it's been a really great winter. We've only we've had the day in October, right, that was because of the, the storm and the trees down, so we only have one day on that. So right now we're looking pretty good. So. So that's that, and then um, I just wanted to also um, kind of shout out about the water bottles. Um, and we had our um, uh, showcase of delivering. Uh, we picked Morris Pond School, it was just one school where they brought the big truck in, and students came out and they got their water bottles. Um, Kelly and Terry were there, um, and um, it was kind of exciting to get them delivered, and so they'll be passed out. Um, so every student, and a uh, staff member will get a water bottle and uh, they can write their names on it. Terry, Terry already has her name on it because part of um, you know, the flu season is that we do not share, so make sure your name gets on it and we are telling the, the students personal items are your personal items and so don't share. So we're excited about, um, you know, and thank you again to the Fraser Construction um, Company, 4,500 bottles uh, were delivered, so we appreciate that. And one last thing that I actually is actually so complicated, I actually need a little bit of um, notes to help me with this. Um, but we have the uh, Massachusetts uh, Educational Technology Administrative Association Award to give out tonight. Um, so Mike Falcone, Falcone, will you please come over? I want to give the award. Um, this guy has, a I'm going to say a little bit about this too. Um, he actually attended a 14-week online course um, that uh, actually awarded him the Chief Technology Officer um, Certificate. And from what I understand, here you go, I'm going to let you say a few words about it. From what I understand, this was an extremely difficult course to take, but it certainly is going to enhance our um, district uh, with the ability that he learned, not only on the IT side, but how... Um, the IT and the instructional world work together and it's so nice to have you know an IT director that you know really understands our instructional side so that we are going to get closer to being able to do our online uh, work when, when we need to or when it makes sense so would you like to say a little bit about the course it was a great course <laughs> literally a couple hours of work every day for 14 or 15 weeks wow. and, uh, it was at the same time as uh, helping out cross, uh, coach cross country and uh, training for a marathon. <laughs> and coming to work. And <laughs> coming to work every day. I basically, uh, for three months, had not much of a life outside of that. But uh, 
it's been very beneficial already for uh, my job here. Uh, I don't think I'd be doing nearly as good of a job without having taken this course. So. Congratulations. Thank you. Excellent. Good job. CPO. Well, <laughs> awesome. can I just say one? I didn't yes. want to cut you off with the. I hate to go back, but I just wanted to um, regarding the the coronavirus and the attendance for for students. I think there's a lot of pressure for kids to come to school every day, and they don't want to miss school. And I feel like there should be some conversation in the classroom about you know if you're sick, you need to stay home because that is how we can kind of um, eliminate a lot of this from happening. And I just know there is a lot of pressure. Thank to, you for saying this school. publicly. So I, what I was referring to was during the flu season, I think that our kids have been healthy, but absolutely our message is, and uh, daily, we have actually suspended um, all of our recognition for attendance because we want kids to stay home. Um, teachers are uh, being flexible with assignments and uh, assessments so that students do not feel like they have to come in to take, well, that all will all be worked out and there will not be penalties for um, students that are home uh, so even though so if that comes to the point here where students need to um, you know be in a quarantine for a 14 day situation that will not count again so um, we're really just downplaying the attendance um, when I said so thank you for the opportunity for me to, to um, kind of backtrack on that my point was during the flu season back in January February before the coronavirus even came out um, I think that our our increased Cleaning really was helping kids stay, stay healthy, but the, the nurses are absolutely, when kids are sick, they go home. Mm -hmm. We encourage parents to keep kids home. Um, that's one of the best preventive methods we could absolutely have. So, and thank you for that opportunity. Are, yes, are, yeah, the thank teachers, you. too. Teachers. Don't come yeah, to work teachers, sick. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Uh, committee member reports? Request for follow-up information? Any future items? Any announcements? And I leave you with a quote. The time is right to do what is right. Martin Luther King. Motion to adjourn. Does I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned. Aye.